what's up everybody it's lids and we're back for some more gwent and today we're playing another absolutely busted deck using cards from the new the tide rises expansion today we'll be playing in standard and you've been forewarned this one is toxic now let's go give it a look so today we'll be playing a Nilfgaard Tactical Decision Statuses deck that focuses on shutting down our opponents with lots of lock and poison, in some cases, boosting our cards in the process. So in round one, we'll keep things simple by dropping a Thirsty Dame to get boosted from all of our statuses, then maybe play an Alba Pikeman next to her to get tons of statuses on our opponents, combine that with lock to shut down their important units, as well as poison to remove those units, and we should be putting up a lot more points than our opponent. Those are all really powerful bronzes, which means we can use the new Battle Stations card to play two of those cards on one turn. So maybe that's a Thirsty Dame and a card that applies the status to boost the Thirsty Dame immediately, or it could be two poisons on one turn to immediately remove one of your opponent's cards. Then, because we draw a couple of cards to replace whatever we played, if we play this in round one, this gives us great thinning, improving our consistency. Then that means we'll have ridiculous firepower remaining in round three, and we'll want to play our defender if we can to protect some of our important cards because then we can drop Masquerade Ball for tons of statuses and a Thirsty Dame to get boosted from all those statuses, Emir to give us even more statuses, a way to trigger Masquerade Ball, and a way to get another card on the board that might apply statuses or get boosted from those statuses. Then we can combine Philippe, another aristocrat who also gives us tons of statuses, with the new Catriona, which gives us a ridiculous amount of poison. It's just a little tricky how you use that poison, because you can only apply it to cards that already have a status, and the Catriona is only allowed to give the first poison, never the second poison to remove a card. That's why having other sources of poison, like Philippe and Masquerade Ball, to combine with the Catriona is so important. And if we still have an Alba Pikeman, we can use the bleeding from this to get the initial status to set up the Catriona as well. Then we also have the new Admiral Kampali, who is just ridiculous, because he gives us three statuses on one turn, including both lock and poison, gets boosted a ton if our opponent still has a card on the board with a lot of statuses on it, and he's an aristocrat, so he can trigger Masquerade Ball as well. So with all those cards, we have ridiculous control with all of our statuses, combined with several cards who can get amazing boosts in the process. So let's go seed in action. All right, so going up against monsters here. And we'll go first. Okay, and we definitely don't want to have two hunting packs in hand, but I do like Thirsty Dame plus Alba Pikeman could be a good way to set ourselves up. Not any golds in our hand, though, which is a little bit concerning. So, uh, let's see if we can maybe... I mean, yes, getting one purification card is probably not a bad idea. Maybe we dump the Spearman. And Moldheim Servant is still useful. I mean, of the poison cards we have, this is the weakest. Although, we actually don't have that much remaining right now. Maybe we dump Turncoat. Okay. Well, lots of statuses. But we are looking at an entirely bronze hand here. So, maybe we start off with the Pikeman. And hopefully that means we have a way to immediately set up the Thirsty Dame as soon as we play her, likely on our next turn. Okay, it's Necker. It's not a great card for us to hit with Bleed, but we could. I mean, we could also block and destroy one of them. I mean, I guess that works too. So I, I think we will still go Thirsty Dame here. Get you into flanking position. And we'll do it. So it does boost Thirsty Dame, so it is helpful. And I think we hold off. Yeah, there's nothing really... There's no reason why we must do this on this turn. Because even if you do get boosted from Thrive, we still have enough damage to destroy you. Whereas Sir Scratchlot is definitely a card that we would like to lock. Or do something to, to shut it down. So let's use one lock on you, because we can't target Scratchlot yet. And now we should be able to remove you. And maybe we'll save some of these charges. I mean... Yeah, we'll use one on Necker so that we can still remove you with Call if we'd like to on our next turn. Okay, Red Riders? Sure. They do play Scratch a lot. Okay, obviously we're going to immediately answer that. How would we like to do that? I mean, it could be a lock. We have a few ways to make that happen. Yeah, why don't we go and Molahem Hunter lock you Worst comes to worst, if they purify, then, uh, well, yeah, actually, poison is not a good idea, because they'll just replay and they'll lose the poison. So, might save Caller just in case they have a way to purify that. I guess we'll still use some charges, or at least one charge on you. I mean, if they purify, obviously, they're going to lose that bleed as well. 
Okay, Necarat. I mean, they are a Bloodthirst deck, so I was expecting them to be doing vampire stuff, not Thrive stuff. So this is more what I expected we'd run into. But we could poison, lock, and then Bam Morlehem Servants and transfer that over onto the Necarat. That's not a terrible option. Would like to get the thinning from Hunting Pack, though. Which we want to make sure we do relatively soon. I'll tell you what. Poison you. We'll just transfer it over from you. And might as well put some bleed on you as well. That way we're transferring even more stuff when we use the Servant. Okay, it's Fledder. And that's obviously a card we'd like to shut down. In fact, we probably would prefer to transfer that over onto the Fledder instead of the Necarat. Debatable. This is more direct points. This is more setup. Without the setup, they can't really get the points. But this also sets up Regis. So let's do this. We'll at least put some bleed. I guess you're easier to remove with bleed. We'll go servants. Transfer over onto you. And I imagine at this point they may just want to pass. But they don't. They go. Uh, they commit big time with Deadloft. That's a strange row to put that in as well. I'm mean, gonna guess it facilitates the death blow. So we could pass here and dare them to try to catch us in one turn. That's not bad, but I do really want to get the thinning from Hunting Pack. So might get a little bit greedy here and still do that. Because especially since we saw we had a whole bunch of bronzes. Yes, we can use our leader ability to help, but now we should see a lot more golds, hopefully, going forward. So let's throw, I think, some extra bleeds on you. Unfortunately, it's not going to be enough to destroy you from that bleed alone. So I would very much like to pass into our next turn. But this is where they death blow. And it just took them a really long time to get their their vampires out. Yeah, and I think they realize that they need to start putting up some pretty serious points. Otherwise, we can pass and they're going to be in trouble. We might still pass. Even if it is theoretically possible they could catch us. Because I don't really want to use Alba Pikeman. This can be a really useful setup card for us long term. And the Fangs of the Empire. I, I mean it can remove Flutter. So that's worth something. But we shut this down pretty much immediately. So it's not like that's a huge point swing. It does help set up Thirsty Dame. It also means we get one more turn to use some Alba Pikeman order abilities. But I don't like giving them extra time to use all this stuff. So I think we'll take our chances here. We have enough bleed on our side that I imagine they will find a way to catch us, but we'll see. Uh, don't go Yigern. Alright, fair enough. So in that case, they do catch us, but they went a card down to do it, and that was with entirely bronzes that we put up a pretty serious round one fight. Okay, so they might try to push 2-0, Although, I mean, it's possible. They like long rounds for most of their vampires, except for Regis, who's a big point slam. They don't have a lot of time to set him up, though, if they rush him in round two. We now have a ton of statuses with the Catriona plus Philippe. That's awesome. Alba Pikeman helps that stuff as well. Uh, Peller could be a throwaway if they do dry pass. Maybe we... Oh. Okay. Well, that helps us with more thinning. Although, um, I would kind of like an actual throwaway. Yeah, um, I, I did kind of mulligan our best throwaway, and now we have a bunch of good cards. <laughs> so, it's a little bit awkward now, but I did do it to myself. So, I mean, we might even go Fangs the Empire here, because, yes, it is helpful to get the finishing poison to complement the Catriona, but since we now have Philippe, it's not as much of a concern, and Mata does not work when they've already passed, unfortunately. So, I think we probably will use this, I think... Alba Pikeman is actually more valuable than Fangs of the Empire here. So I think we do that. And we'll take round two. Okay, and we draw into Masquerade Ball, which would have been what Mata would give us. Let's just double check then. That means it's either the Admiral or actually Enmir would be the card we draw into in that case. And that's not bad. I think Turncoat... Is not a huge deal. Peller, certainly don't need two of them. Okay, Defender, not bad. We do also have Leader Ability, so that can help us a little bit if we don't love the things we have. We will get a little bit of extra card draw from Battle Stations. In fact, do we have enough Bronzes to use with that? 
Uh, Pikemen plus Heller, I suppose. Once we do play Emir, we'll get another card draw from that, assuming we have something to go along with it. In fact, that's how we should play Pikemen. Ooh, yeah, we do actually. We need more bronzes. We played so many in round one. So maybe we just get Emir as quickly as possible here. Which I believe, yeah, this card we drawn to here. All right, they'll go Katakin. That is a good engine for a long round. Now we would expect to see more of the vampire-y stuff that we were expecting to see more of in round one. So I think we might start Defender, Emir, and just see where that gets us. And we can consider going leader ability if we have to, to set up battle stations. And we should have, theoretically, have enough bronzes that it's still possible to, to make that work. But uh, it was a very strange round one. With all those bronzes. And for Aristocrats... We have one here. Oh, we actually are going to need more Aristocrats, aren't we? We might have to go Masquerade Ball next turn and then Emir. I don't like the Veil. That is what the Teller is useful for. That's the primary reason why he's here. Of course, against Vampires, it might be useful to get rid of some bleed on our own cards as well. But I guess at the moment, if we had to go with Poison on Catechin, we could live with that. And Thirsty Dame can be a pretty huge engine force, of course. Okay, Cave Troll, that's unfortunate, but we should have enough removal to go after him as well. They use all their lead ability charges. I mean, it does set up Katakin, I suppose. All right, so now let's get Amir down. He'll trigger the first round of Masquerade Ball. We'll use that on the Cave Troll. We'll get the Pikeman down. Okay, we draw into another Aristocrat, so that's useful. So now we put you in flanking position. And we do not put you in flanking position. Do that. Okay, Feast of Blood. Pure Fire Defender, unfortunate, but it did last long enough to at least give us some half-decent value. So now we could go Admiral, we could go Philippe, we could go Catriona. All those are solid. Let's go Philippe, I think. And I guess technically we can't really put him behind the Defender anymore. That's not a huge difference maker. Do this. And we now can remove the defender. And now we can... Let's see. I think go after you is the thing we're going to want to do. We get the bleed. Which means we can now get the lock. And... We're going to have to purify you before we can do much. Uh, we might just save your charge for the time being. Okay. Parasite on who? I honestly don't even remember who that was. Was that Philippe? Okay, that does kind of stink. We do still have the Catriona, but Philippe was the best way to set this up. This will still give us boost for Thirsty Dame, of course, and Rob Polly can be our finisher for the Catriona then. So let's go here. You are also flanking, so we want to put you on the end. And we'll put some extra lead on I guess you in anticipation of using the Admiral pretty soon. Okay, Mastercraft and Spear on... Ooh, oh, that was pretty nasty. Okay, so... Really nasty, in fact. Wow. Okay, that was pretty huge. All right, I think we need to leader ability here. So he wants to get some bronze cards so we can use battle stations. Should not have been this awkward to use it, but round one was setting us up for uh, a tricky way to make this happen. So that probably means we're gonna have to get rid of the Admiral, but let's see what happens here. So we'll use you... Okay, plenty of bronzes. Don't think we need you. Uh, you're kind of useful as a point slam. Dump you. And, I mean, it's gonna have to be the Admiral, right? So now we do this. And we do this. And we do this. Okay, we drew into the worst possible cards. But this gave us some damage. And we can deal some more damage with the turncoat. Had to rush this a bit, so I don't think we got the best possible targets. Okay, yeah, this really stinks. So, obviously we wanted the Admiral, but we had to get rid of the Admiral if we wanted to use Battle Stations. Maybe the best answer was to say we're only going to get one card from Battle Stations and leave it at that. Then we could have still used the Admiral, but we'll see. Uh, so we have Squirrel, we have Peller. Neither one is all that impactful. I mean, we could maybe save Peller 
for our final turn, I guess, in case they apply a bunch of bleed. I don't think that's going to happen at this late stage. But we'll do this. We can steal you now. And then we'll go squirrel on something. Uh, I mean, Yigurn, they would... Uh, yeah, if they were to Osrel, I suppose that could be useful for them. So we'll get rid of that. So they presumably do still have Regis as a big finisher. They did delay a little bit with some of their bleed. They don't have any anymore. So he's not going to be quite as big as he might have otherwise been. We have a big lead, but is it going to be big enough? Necrat will help set him up, of course. Purify the bleed, and that way you don't get destroyed. We avoid one point of damage. Otherwise, we're getting rid of your veil, which doesn't really matter at this stage. So I think we just do this. And we do this. Okay, so... Is our lead big enough? Assuming that this is Regis. No, it's Geralt. But that is not big enough. Either way, we will still hold on for the win. All right, so going up against Northern Realms here. And we'll go first. All right, so we do have some big cards here with Masquerade Ball, the Admiral, and the Catriona all in hand. That's great, but we probably want to save most, if not all of those for round three. So I think in round one, we're gonna build around mostly Thirsty Dame, uh, we'd love to see Alba Pikeman, I think. Van Molheim Servant could work as well. I don't think we need two of you. Okay, uh, Amir was going to be the Mata target. Now I'm not even sure who Mata's getting, because we have most of our big cards in hand. Might need to play something big in round one in that case. Might not have many alternatives here. Um, well, I'm going to dump you. Oh my goodness, I mean, it's a great hand, don't get me wrong. It's just that uh, I don't really want all this stuff in this round. And it's also a little bit tough to find something to play turn one, because I really wanted an Alba Pikeman here. And I, we could commit Emir in this round, I suppose, and then still have the Leap to go along with the Catriona in round three. I guess we'll do that. So we'll go Emir, and I think we'll go Thirsty Dame. Draw into... Okay, good. Draw into the Alba Pikeman. I like that. So two important cards on the board early. We'll go Muta Generator. Okay, interesting. So that means nothing for us to interact with just yet, but it does give us time now to get this Alpha Pikeman on the board. And that means we will have a bunch of cards that are going to be set and ready to go as soon as they start playing units. Oh, but okay, we we did need we did need purification as it turns out. And did I mulgan all of it? We saw two pillars, didn't we? And I mulgan them both. Well, yes, we got a little unlucky there. Let's use Masa then, I suppose. So that is one of the few cards we have that does not absolutely need them to have units for us to interact with. And that's going to gain a charge and one armor. I guess that's not the end of the world. We do draw into battle stations now. And do we have enough bronzes to use that? Yeah, we do. Okay, at least the Maiden Shield we can hit. Uh, they get extremely aggressive boosting it. So can we... Can we double poison it here. We have at least one poison. We're to battle stations. We go poison and then, I mean, we could pass over now. Nah, we can't really pass over the poison to anyone. We'd have to go spearman, which is going to do a little bit of damage, but not a lot. I would deal a lot of damage to the Danian agent, I suppose. I mean, maybe we don't immediately answer you then, but maybe on our next turn we'll draw into. Also, we can get that extra status from that. Oh, right. It gets rid of your shield. Okay. Maybe it wasn't the best card to use that on in that case, but we'll go battle stations. We'll go here and then here. Oh, wait, no, I meant the other one. Yeah, my bad. Okay. So we go poison. Oh, shoot. Okay. Well, because this doesn't work at all. Lids is a silly billy confirmed. Also, we could have done that for more uh, more statuses to copy over. Well, it had Veil, so it wouldn't have mattered. Unfortunately, just a bad misclick. But I was kind of really looking for additional poison, and we did not draw into it, unfortunately. And I don't really want to use the Admiral right now. I mean, we could. Could save him for our next turn. All right, I guess we'll do this. We'll do more of this. And we can basically destroy you whenever we want with the Spearman. Okay, old geared. That's not a bad target for the Van Mulhem Servant. So in that case, I think we will do that. Might as well 
apply a whole bunch of bleed on you. And we'll do this. And then we may very well use the Admiral as a finisher if necessary, but I mean, that was worth a lot of points. So this may be good enough. Okay, Geralt's, okay, it's huge, huge tempo there. We could answer with some huge tempo of our own and go use the Admiral. I guess we'll add bleed while we're at it. It's not gonna make a huge difference, but go Admiral and do... So it's gonna be lock first. That's not super impactful. But the poison is, I think we'll remove you with poison. And then we will uh, get the spying for the last one, which also doesn't make a huge difference. And now there are four statuses on use. This is four point per turn engine, and they don't want to mess with that. So we did end up committing more than I would have liked in round one, but I mean, what were you going to do when we had a hand with so many big things like that? Suppose we could have leader ability, but we do still have Philippe, the Catriana, and Masquerade Ball. Okay, and we did play one more card than our opponent, so for that reason, we will probably look to dry pass here. We draw into a little more of that uh, poison that we were trying to get in round one. Would have loved to have had this rather than having to have committed the Admiral. We get some purification, which looks like could actually be pretty important here if they have more Veil. Okay, but again, maybe one Peller is enough. But I think we'll dry pass here either way. And they did some deck boosting in round one, so... They very well could have a big point slam. Okay, and I do really like the Alba Pikeman to help set ourselves up with Philippe and with the Catriana. This gives us some pure damage, this gives us some safety. Lock if we need it, more poison if we need it, one additional status and technically some damage. Uh, we might be able to do better than that. What else would we like to see? Uh, well, maybe that is more or less the best we can do here. Okay, Mantlet. So they're giving themselves armor. That's not a huge deal. We do have some damage with things like the Spearman. I think we'll probably start with our Defender first, then use things like Ball, Philippe, and the Catriona in roughly that order. Also would like to get a Pikeman down relatively soon as well. Okay, Curse of Corruption. Unfortunate they had an answer for the Defender, but we had to check. We could potentially start a little bit slow by going Pikeman here instead of going straight into Masquerade Ball, because that way, if they do have more removal, they might have to use it on the Pikeman rather than the Thirsty Dame. I mean, both of them are valuable, but maybe they're more likely to dismiss that Pikeman as a non-threat. Okay, Care Saren. It does give them more deck boosting, so maybe that's the primary thing they're looking for. Griffin Witcher is damage. And armor. We could lock it, but I think that's going to have to be one of our aristocrats for Masquerade Ball, right? So I think we are probably breaking out Masquerade Ball now. That could even be a card we remove with Masquerade Ball. So let's do this. And let's do this. And I mean, we could even use a leader ability charge if we wanted to. I don't think there's great value in doing that just yet, at least. All right, Dancing Star. Ooh, okay. Really would have liked to have kept that Alba Pikeman. And now we'll go Philippe. And with him, we'll get some poison. And that means we can lock you as well. Okay, Griffin Witcher Adept. They're going to try to transform other Witchers into the Griffin Witcher Adept and in doing so potentially dodge some of our status removal. So I think we're going to have to be pretty quick with stuff like Catriana here. Remove you. So at least in this case, it's not a concern. Okay, Keldar, not surprised. Uh, it is a bit concerning though, because that does help them go wide. And we are not that good at stopping wide. So I think what we'll do is we'll probably break out the Van Wollenheim Hunter here will lock. And then, do we need this poison? Let's see. Philippe would lock here. No, I think we'll Catriona poison and then we'll remove the Philippe, right? So I think that means we do that. We use this. And then we do. Technically, you're. 
not a huge concern anymore now that you have been locked, but I think we'll still get the removal. And then we do have the charges to set all of you guys up. Oh no, but you don't have any statuses at the moment, so that's not possible. Okay, so yeah, we expected them to do that. And a stringer. So now this is where, having lost the Alba Pikeman, it becomes much harder to use these Catriona charges. But it should still be possible if we do things like Turncoat here. What's our highest priority? Maybe it's Anna Stringer. So we give you the Spying, which means we can give you the Poison. Which means we can give you Removal. And give you Poison as well. Okay. And they'll keep on flipping the Adepts back and forth to try to remove those statuses. But we're still getting points on the Thirsty Dame. Okay, so you put the Veil on that, it does boost Thirsty Dame a tiny bit. We can remove Veil with uh, the Peller if we absolutely need to. I assume next turn is going to be Erland, although the, they don't have that many cards left in their deck, so I don't know. We'll see. But if they have another Geralt, then obviously Thirsty Dame is in trouble. I think we go Leader Buildy here. Just see what our other options might be. Don't think we need that Peller. You are just a, a better version of King Cobra, so I think we dump you, dump you. Uh, all the shields, I think, are going to make you pretty tough, so I think we dump you as well. So then, I think we'll go Poison, Removal, and then possibly even Lock. Well, that might have been useful for uh, going after whatever they played next. It's Spores to reset Thirsty Dame. Unfortunate, but we have enough units on the board that even without those boosts, we should still be fine here, and we still have enough... Enough status stuff remaining that we can still boost her up a little bit more. And there's just no way for them to stop us at this point, and so they will just pass on their last turn. We will win by almost 40 points with a card to spare. So there's a look at a new Nilfgaard statuses deck using cards from the new The Tide Rises expansion. If you liked the video, then make sure to hit the like and subscribe button, and leave a comment down below to let me know which other cards, archetypes, and factions we should experiment with next. Thank you all for watching, and I'll catch you next time.